Rumor has it you've been getting a little emotional recently during your trades. And I want to talk about that today. I want to help you get better at controlling your emotions or even removing your emotions from your trading. In this video, I'm going to give you three actionable steps that you can take to help reduce or eliminate your emotionality during your trading. And in addition, I'm also going to throw in one tip that will help separate you from the rest of the pack and get you to profitability quicker. Roll the intro. Okay, so let's dive into this. Let's get deep into the problems that you're having. And you know what I'm talking about. The sweaty palms, the racing heart, the sweaty feet, the sweat soaked shirt, the heavy breathing, you know all the signs and symptoms, you know what's going on. You're sitting in front of that computer, you got your finger on the button, and you're sweaty, you're dripping onto the computer. It's disgusting, it's ruining your keyboard, and, and it's gotta stop. So we're addressing that right now. Step number one, here is what you can do, first and foremost, to control your emotions or remove emotions from your trading, and that's just simply predefining how much money you can lose in that trade. I hear people talking all the time about how they don't have a defined amount of risk and so they just want to see what happens. And I think that's a really bad idea, especially for new traders, because if you take one or two big hits, you're going to be discouraged, you're going to be done. You're not going to come back and do it over and over. But if you have a predefined amount that you can lose, then the beautiful thing of this is you know, like say you go into it and you say, I'm willing to risk $50 on every trade and you have $5,000 cash. You know that you can sustain a lot of losers in a row and not go bankrupt. That's the key. You're not going to come in and bet five. You're not going to come in and trade $5,000 risk on day one. You'll blow up your account and you'll never get to profitability which is possible no matter what anyone tells you. You can be profitable if you approach it in the right way. So step one, predefine your risk. For me right now, I'm trading with $300 risk. So I know that on every trade, I cannot lose more than $300. And you're probably wondering, well, how do you just say a number and then not lose more than that? Well, let's jump over to the computer real quick and let me just do a quick calculation and show you exactly how to calculate the number of shares you need to buy in order to arrive at a perfect risk number, whatever it is that you pick. So let's jump over there real quick. Okay, this is so simple, you're gonna laugh after I show this to you. The best way to approach this is to tell yourself, okay, once I've got my trade set up, what's my stop loss? You ask yourself this question. So let's say just randomly, your stop loss is 45 cents. Okay, and you want to risk $100 on the trade. So if you've predefined your risk to be $100, we'll just type that into the, into the calculator. And then from here you say, okay, my stop loss is going to be 45 cents. So I'm going to divide by 45 cents. Well, what does that give you? The number of shares to buy. So if you buy 222 shares, so we'll clear this out, 222 shares, and you lose 45 cents, Multiply it by 45 cents, you get you hit your stop loss on those 222 shares, you're gonna lose $99.90. So you can see what I'm saying about being in the neighborhood of whatever you want to risk. If it's hundred, great. Let's do another example. You want to risk five hundred dollars on every single trade, and your stop loss is I don't know, give me one, make one up a dollar twenty-five. Divide by a dollar twenty-five by 400 shares. Because if you have 400 shares and you lose $1.25, you're gonna lose $500. That's that's it. That's like the magic that I'm showing you is this simple, stupid calculation. Just divide your risk by your stop loss and that'll give you the amount of shares that you need to buy in order to guarantee that you cannot lose more than your R value. Now granted, there is slippage, so you could lose $508 or $492. It'll be in that neighborhood, but if you're trading liquid products, you shouldn't have much slippage. So with that, let's continue. 
So now that you understand how to calculate your risk, how many shares to buy so that you don't, or sell, so that you don't lose more than your predetermined risk unit. If you know you can't lose more than $100 in a trade, you have no reason to sweat. You're comfortable with that $100 risk. It's got to be a number you're comfortable with. You can't trade size that makes you sweat. You have to pick a number that's small enough to be comfortable and sustainable, and then you can worry about growing in the future. Now, what if we move on to step number two? I, I think that you've probably had trouble with this. Just from what I hear, you're not using a stop loss, are you? That is tip number two. You have got to have a hard stop in the system. I know that prop traders are trading million share lots and they've got their finger on the trigger and they're super specialized and they don't need a stop loss because they're in and out. That's not us. That's not you. I know that's not you. We're coming in, we need to predefine our risk and we need to have a stop loss. Because if suddenly something shifts in the market and maybe you're not even looking at your computer and it goes against you, you could double, triple, quadruple or 10X your loss without even knowing it in just a few seconds. So always put that stop loss in. And if you need to see a video on bracket orders, there's one right here, but you just need to be able to create a bracket that has a stop loss included. So when you enter your order, you already have the stop loss in place. So you can't get beat more than your predetermined amount. Now there is slippage. You might lose a penny or two on your shares when your stop gets hit. That just happens. So it's going to be in the neighborhood of your risk amount. If you're risking hundred bucks, you might lose anywhere from 90 to $110 or $104. It just depends on how much slippage you get. And that's why you want to trade very liquid stocks. You want to stay with stocks that have a very tight bid ask spread. So that's tip number two. You have got to have a stop loss in place at all times. Now be honest with me. Have you been using a stop? If you have, or if you haven't, jump down the comments real quick. Let me know. I want to hear your reasoning. Why? If you're not using one, tell me why. And if you are, I'd like to hear your reasoning for that as well. So go ahead and leave me a comment real quick. Now, before we go any further, I just want to remind everyone that I did start a channel membership and you can click the join button on the YouTube channel. That'll get you access to priority response for questions from me. You can email me. You're going to get a, an invite to a private Slack group. And in that Slack group, we all trade in the morning. We answer questions. It's a great environment to, to learn and get I trade ideas, but to also just see good mechanics. We're currently in the process of a 30 day challenge of no day trade plan breaking. You can't break your plan at all for 30 days. And we're currently, we just finished up day eight. So it's going really well, but there's motivated people in this room who are using good mechanics and you get access to me to ask any questions that you have. So grab a membership for 25 bucks a month and join us and come trade with clean mechanics. All right, so let's get into step number three and that's gonna be have an exit plan. A lot of people get into a trade, and I've done this before. I know you've done it, I've done it. It's just something that happens, right? You get into a trade, and tell me if this is familiar. You get into a trade, and you're feeling good about it. You have your stop loss, you predefined your risk, and now the stock moves in your favor, and you're up really big, and you're feeling good about it, and then you start to sweat, because where do I get out? Should I get out when there's a pivot low or a pivot high? If volume steps up, should I get out? All these questions start to circle in your head and you don't have the answer. At least I don't think you have the answer to that. You've been trading, getting sweaty, the high heart rate, all these problems because you don't know when to get out. And then at the last minute you go, okay, I'll stay in. And then the stock tanks, you lose your profits, you cut it early and you barely made anything. I know that happens to you. It happened to me, it happens to everyone. So don't feel like it's just you. The only thing you need to change is your approach to this problem. So you want to have a plan, a predetermined exit plan. For a lot of time, if you watch my channel on YouTube, Taking Trades, you'll see that I was trading a 2R plan, meaning if I get a 2R move in my favor, I would take the trade off and take the 2Rs. Now, some people take one and a half R's, some people do percentages. It just, you just have to have a plan. Currently, I close my position at the end of the trading day, right before the close. I let it run all day. So that's one exit plan you can use is a predetermined R value or letting it run for the day, or you could use a percentage, whatever appeals to you, you need to have the exit plan. And here's the key about predefining your risk, 
having a stop loss, and having an exit plan. All three of these tips, the one thing that will take the legs out from all of this and destroy it all is if you can't be consistent. You can't change things on the fly. You can't even change things day to day. You need to create that plan and then you need to stick with that for at least 30 days in a row to give it a fair shot to see what the metrics are. Now, I did promise you one additional tip that would help separate you from other traders and decrease the amount of time it takes for you to become profitable. And I wanna share that with you right now. So this is a very simple tip or simple idea. And that is if you can follow these three steps and admit to yourself that you aren't following these, that you are being variable and you're kind of all over the place, the quicker you can admit that, that lack of consistency, own it, you will have immediately shaved a ton of time off of your path to becoming profitable. This happened to me and I'm guessing it happened to you. This happened to me not that long ago. I was working with a trading system and I kept monkeying with things every time I go through a losing patch. This is something that I think you and I can share that we have in common, is if something stops working, even if it's for a week, you start to question it. I know you've done this because I've done it. You start to question it, you start to think, okay, what changes can I make to this? How can I make it better? Which, that's great. We all need to be improving. We all need to be finding ways to make our trades better. But what you need to do is do that research and conduct that back testing on the side. Don't change your plan day to day and week to week and month to month. You have to stick with a set system. Now last year, I had a very profitable final four months of the year. After the new year, I changed brokers. I had to step aside from trading for a month to get that sorted out. And when I came back, I hit a rough patch and a down month. And I questioned my system. And that was the wrong thing to do because then I monkeyed with it. Then it took another month. Then before I knew it, I was going, what am I trading? What am I trying to do? So you've got to stick with what you know, what appeals to you, and what has possibly been working. You have to give it time to breathe and work. Now, I changed after four months, so you can see how hard this is. So what I recommend, and I've got my trading plan actually hanging up on my wall right here. In the Slack group, the private Slack group that we have, if you join the channel membership, I come out and announce to the group in the morning, all right, today is day nine of my 30-day challenge. Today is day eight. I'm trying to be held accountable to everyone in the group just to show that you have to commit to it and also to show how hard it is. If you don't have someone to report to, it's hard to be monitored. It's hard to have someone say, hey, wait a minute, why are you changing? You said you weren't going to. You need someone to help you with that, someone to be held accountable to. You can use our Slack group for that. You can message me in the comments of the video for that. I'm happy to help hold you accountable because we all need it. So the three steps, predefine that risk. You have to do it. Use that stop loss every single time. And from the trade outset, don't put it in later. It has to be in when you put the order in. And then finally, step number three, you need to have that exit plan. This will reduce how many t-shirts you're buying because they've all got the big pit stains. You don't, I know you've been spending a lot of money on t-shirts and you don't need to be. Your desk, your computer, keyboard, you're sweating all over at the high heart rate. It's just not good. Get rid of that. Be stress-free, have that plan, execute the plan, and then stay consistent and don't change that plan. All right, I hope this was helpful. Come join the channel, grab a membership, subscribe if you're new, hit the thumbs up button if you got any value out of this content, and I'll see you in the next video.